And we are now recording. <clears throat> All right, so I set up the shared screen. So I believe we've gotten to the point where I can just average one section a day, which means a lot of the days from here on out, we may finish early, including today. But we'll see. And let's see. Uh-oh, it's not a good sign. I'm getting the twirling thing. Okay, I'm back, but I wasn't able to share the screen. I have to try it again. So this might be one of those situations where I don't get a good go. Let's try it. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, so we're up to 16.6. Okay, so game plan for now, if I do the one section a day, 16.7, if I can get my pen to work, 16.7, 16.8, 16.9. So I'm gonna put that down as a game plan for now. One section a day, 16, six, seven, eight, and nine. If something goes wrong, I take too long for something. Um, if necessary, I'll push the exam back to Tuesday the 18th, but I'm gonna aim for the 13th for the last regular exam, okay? All right, and I've already introduced some of 16, six. So I'll go ahead with that. If I finish 16, six, quote unquote, real early, I'll do like I usually do sneak in a little of the next section just to make it easier and next time then I'll go ahead and give you the quiz and then that'll be it okay all right so 16.6 uh, 1 2 19 25 33 to 49 we're ready to start and check if there's anything in the chat nothing in the chat that I need to worry about so I think we're good okay so here we go with some of the problems in 16.6. Unfortunately, some of the problems in 16.6, they don't even tell us how to do it, okay? So I'll just have to do it for you. <clears throat> so we're doing parametric surfaces in the area, okay? So our position function is a function of two variables. R of T we had before gave you a space curve. When you have two parameters, you have a surface, something like that blue picture there. And in terms of formulas that you need, so for tangent planes, let's see. Okay, don't worry about surfaces of revolution. We did that before, okay? But we talked before about a tangent plane. Okay. So R of UV, as X, Y, and Z components. Again, R is a position vector. So its components are X, I, and Y, J plus Z, K. Okay. To take their derivatives, as we will need to do, you just deriv take the derivative of each component. All right. So R sub U, R sub V, okay, partial of X with respect to V, partial of Y with respect to V, partial of Z with respect to V, that's R sub V, and likewise for R sub U. Okay, so surface area. If you have a parameterization of R in terms of U and V, then the area of the surface is double integral of magnitude of RU cross RV. R sub U is partial of X with respect to U, partial of Y with respect to U, partial of Z with respect to U. And R sub V, partial of X with respect to V, partial of Y with respect to V, partial of Z with respect to V. Three derivatives in one. Surface area, we've actually seen this before. If X is a function of what? Uh, sorry, Z is a function of X and Y. <laughs> you have this formula, you put it on your cheat sheet, but you've seen it before. But I should hasten that or the equivalent. I believe in the homework problem, either in this section or another section, they actually give you Y as a function of X and Z. They could also give you X as a function of Y and Z, then you just change the variables accordingly from that formula there, okay? All right, so here we go. 
Um, we had to go up to what problem again? Was it 49, I think it was? Okay, I don't remember if I showed you all this yet, but I'll just go ahead and show it to you again anyway. There's that, that, that. Uh, I didn't give you any matching, that's too difficult. Find a parametric representation. Okay, so as usual, my goal is to show you how to do some of them, and then hopefully you can do the rest. And then 33 to 49, tangent plane. And find the area of the surface. Okay, so how do you do problems like one and two? Determine whether the points P and Q lie on a given surface. Okay, so I'll do two, you do one. R of U, V is equal to whatever, one, plus u minus v, u plus v squared, u squared minus v squared. And the points are 1, 2, 1, and q, 2, 3, 3. Okay. So number two. So r is a position vector. So each of x and y and z, these are x, y, and z, they could have two letters, u and v. Okay. Is the point 1, 2, 1 on the surface? If it is, we ought to be able to find what the u and the v are. So I set this thing equal to one x u plus v squared has to equal two and u squared minus v squared has to equal one, right? X is equal to that one. Y is equal to that two. Z is equal to that one. You actually have three equations and two unknowns. That sounds weird, but you could have a consistent system. If so, Try to find what the u and v are. Okay, so how do you solve it? Just do what you would normally do for anything else. See, if you look at x, subtract one, u plus v is equal to zero. That means u is equal to negative v or v is equal to negative u, right? Okay, then I'll plug in to say z. If I plug in a z, u squared minus v squared is u squared minus a negative u squared. That's u squared minus u squared, which is zero. And it says zero is equal to one. Well, that's a contradiction, that's impossible. So the answer is no. This point in space is not on this surface. Right, I got a contradiction. And one more time, if you look at the first equation, u plus v is zero, that means u and v are opposites. I plugged it in here, u squared minus negative u squared, that's u squared minus u squared, which is zero. So a contradiction. On the other hand, how about the point two, three, three? So x, one plus u minus v has to equal two. Y, u plus v squared has to equal three. And z, u squared minus v squared has to equal three. Okay, so let's solve. Okay, so u plus v is equal to one, which means u is equal to one minus v, right? from x. Okay, now I'll take that and plug into one of the other equations. So what did I do? I plug into the y. So u is one minus v, one minus v plus v squared equals three. That's a quadratic equation. Clean it up, v squared minus v subtract three equals zero. Factor, v minus two, v plus one equals zero. So v is either two or negative one. Okay, now if v is equal to two, put a v equals two here and u is negative one. I could check negative one, but I don't have to right now. Okay, I can very easily confirm that when v is two and u is negative one, all three work, which means the answer is yes. Okay, so let's see. U is negative one, v is two. U is negative one, one minus one plus two is two. That's correct. Okay, u plus v squared, u plus v squared, is negative one plus four, that's equal to three. That's correct. And then u squared minus v squared, u squared is one minus four. Uh, let's see, did I do that right? Maybe I didn't do that right. Uh, did I, ah, that one's negative one plus four is three. Yeah, okay, so that works. All right, so you basically plug them all in and the answer is yes. Okay, so 
all three of them work. So that's how you do that kind of a problem. You just solve and see if it works or see if it doesn't work. Okay, 19. Find a parametric representation for the surface. So, so you have to come up with some R position vector involving two parameters, U and V. Okay, the plane number 19, the plane through the origin that contains the vectors I minus J and J minus K. I minus J is one, negative one, zero. J minus K is zero, one, negative one. So what you do is you take the given point, origin, zero, 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 plus a scalar multiple U of one, negative one, zero, plus a scalar multiple V of zero, one, negative one. That's J minus K. So starting point, zero, 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 scalar multiple U, of one negative one zero, scalar multiple v of zero, one negative one. So x is zero plus u plus zero, y is zero minus u plus v, and z is zero plus zero minus v. Okay, so x is equal to u, y is equal to negative u plus v, z is equal to negative v. All right, so that's a representation of this. So you have to get it down to two variables u and v in this particular case. Okay, number 23, the part of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus four that lies above the cone, z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, if I square both sides here, I get z squared equals x squared plus y squared. It's at a 45 degree angle, okay? If I cover up one of these, z squared equals x squared, z is plus or minus x, 45 degree angle, likewise for y, okay? And this is a sphere. So I have spherical coordinates. Okay? X is rho sine phi cosine data. Y is rho sine phi sine data. Z is rho cosine phi, but the radius is two. It's given to be two right here. So instead of putting rho, I put two. And I have it down to two variables, theta and phi. So x is two sine phi cosine theta. Y is two sine phi sine theta. Z is two cosine phi. Okay, looking at the picture, what are the boundaries? Well, we're going all the way around a circle. So theta goes from zero to two pi, but phi goes from zero to pi over four. It's only coming down to 45 degrees, and then I swing all the way around. So that's my description of that one, okay? Okay, and then 25. And 25 here. Part of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 36. So that means rho is six. And it lies between z equals zero, x, y plane, and z equals three radical three. That's just in order for us to tell you know, what the boundaries of the parameters are, the variables. So that's what I have. Okay, so if z is three radical three, if you square it, right, you have x squared plus y squared, three radical three quantity squared is 27. That's x squared plus y squared equals nine. Okay, so if I go up to x squared plus y squared equals nine, radius is three here, this is six. Okay. Phi, okay, over here, phi is pi over two, you know that. But to come all the way up here, that's three. I hypotenuse is six. This angle right here has to be 30 degrees. Okay, the side opposite the 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse, you might recall. Sine of 30 degrees is a half. 
the sun sort of uses half. Okay, so from this picture, it's kind of like the Earth here. This is the equator. Okay, this is way up there where the radius is three. So it touches at C equals three radical three. This distance from here to here is three, so that's 30 degrees. Okay, so the phi goes between pi over six and pi over two. Okay, we're within this band right here. Okay, so between pi over six and pi over two. All right, so I put the same formula essentially, but the row this time is six. So X is six sine phi cosine data. Y is six sine phi sine data. Z is six cosine phi. Data going from zero to two pi, phi between 30 degrees pi over six and pi over two. Okay. All right, that's those. <clears throat> now, 33, find the equations of a tangent plane to the given param parametric surface at the specified point. Okay, so X, Y, and Z are given, and the point is 2, 3, 0. So how do we do that? So x is u plus v, y is 3u squared, z is equal to u minus v. The point is 2, 3, 0. So first I have to find out what the u and the v are at 2, 3, 0. What are u and v? So that means 2 goes here, 3 goes here, 0 goes here. If we put a 0 here, u minus v is 0. That means u equals v. They're the same. But x is 2. So if x is 2 and u and v are the same, they both have to be 1. Okay, so there it is u equals 1, v equals 1. Okay, and quick double check uh, x equals u plus v. Plug in 1 plus 1 is 2, that's right. 3 times 1 squared is 3. 1 minus 1 is 0. It works. Okay, so to find a tangent plane, I need R sub U, R sub V, and then a cross product. Okay, that was a long time ago when we did that. But to get a normal vector, you take two vectors in the plane, R sub U, R sub V, and then take the cross product. So what's the derivative with respect to U? Okay, so derivative with respect to U is one. Derivative with respect to U is six U. Derivative with respect to U is one. So R sub U is one, six, one. The derivative of R with respect to U, just take the three derivatives. R sub V, differentiate with respect to V, one. That doesn't have any V, so zero, negative one. And I take the cross product. So R U cross R V is one, six, one, one, zero, negative one, and I, J, and K. <clears throat> so I is negative six U minus nothing the opposite of negative one minus one and nothing minus six u, so negative six u. So it's negative six u, positive two, that's negative negative two, right? Positive two, negative six u. Okay, now I plug in u equals one, v equals one. Put a one there, one there. So negative six, two, negative six is a normal vector. Okay, that works, but it's a lot easier to just pick an easier one Easy one is you divide out the two and make these both positive. So I use negative a half times that. Remember, if you have a normal vector to a plane, any scalar multiple would also be a normal vector to the plane. So I picked the one that was negative a half times this. It's a little bit cleaner. Three, negative one, three. Okay, so the equation is, remember, these are the components that you have. They're the coefficients of x, y, and z. So three x minus y plus three z equals a constant k. To find the k, I plug in the given point two, three, zero. So put a two here, three here, zero here. So three times two is six, <clears throat> minus three plus nothing equals k, k is equal to three. So here's my answer. Three x minus y plus three z equals three. So that's the equation of the tangent plane to the surface. Okay, and this is completely analogous to tangent line that you did in calc one. Okay, but now if you have a surface, 
you have a surface, you have a tangent plane, and that's the equation of the tangent plane. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna do another one for you, 37. Find the equation of the tangent plane to the given parametric surface. Never mind about graphing it, too difficult. 37, they give you the u and a v. So you plug in to find x, y, and z. Actually, it's easier that way. So see 33, where they give you the point, two, three, zero. <laughs> That's actually harder because they might give you some funny equations to solve for u and v. Much better is 37, where they give you the u and the v. You can always just plug in to find the x, y, and z. So I got to see some trig there. Doesn't matter, it doesn't bother me. I'm just going to plug in and get it. Okay, so R of U, V. Okay, remember when it's R, this is X, Y, and Z. So it's the same thing if they say X equals U squared, Y equals two U sine V, Z is equal to U cosine V, which is the same thing as going on here. Okay, and they told me U is one, V is zero. So I plug in, <clears throat> plug in one, one. Plug in one and zero, sine of zero is zero. And u, one, cosine of zero is one, one times one is one. Okay, so the point is one, zero, one. That's my u and that's my v. All right, r sub u, r sub v. Okay, derivative with respect to u, two u, two sine v, cosine v. Derivative with respect to v, nothing. 2u cosine v, negative u sine v. Take the cross product, <clears throat> ijk, 2u, 2 sine v, cosine v, 0, 2u cosine v, negative u sine v. Okay, i component, that minus that, negative 2u sine squared v, minus 2u cosine squared v and the opposite of negative 2u squared sine v minus nothing and then let's see 4u squared cosine v minus nothing okay and you may notice that this is the same as negative 2u if you factor out the negative 2u you have sine squared plus cosine squared, so that's one. So it's basically just negative two u. Maybe I should write that over here. This is negative two u. <clears throat> okay, now I plug in u equals one, v equals zero. So plug in one, that's a negative two. Plug in here, sine of zero is zero. And plug in u is one, that's one, cosine of zero is one, so negative two, zero, four is a normal vector. But again, you might as well take smaller numbers and I like to have the leading coefficient positive. So I multiplied this vector by negative a half. Remember, if you have a normal vector, any scalar multiple would also be a normal vector. So I took negative a half of negative two, zero, four, one, zero, negative two. That means the equation in the plane is one X plus zero Y, which means you don't have to write it, minus two Z. And it's equal to some k. How do I find the k? I plug in one, zero, one. Okay, put a one here, a one there. One minus two is k, k is negative one. So the equation of this plane is x minus two z is negative one. I'll accept that. Or if you want to have as few minus signs as possible, multiply both sides by negative one. Negative x plus two z is equal to one. And of course, that's the same thing. Okay. So that's that. Okay, and now we have some problems involving surface area. <clears throat> Find the area of the surface. The part of the plane three x plus two y plus z equals six lies in the first octant. So you want to solve for z there, and then use the surface area formula. All right, so see what's going on here. 
solve for z. Z is six minus three x minus two y, right? Let's go ahead and find the x, y, and z intercepts. <laughs> Plug in zero for y, zero for z, x is two, two, zero, zero, correct? Plug in two here, that's six plus nothing plus nothing. Okay, y intercept, let x and z be zero. X and z is zero, two y equals six, y is three, zero, three, zero. Double check, put a zero here, that's nothing. Put a three here, six, put a zero there, that works. And the z intercept is zero, zero, six. Put a zero there, zero there, z equals six, zero, zero, six. Okay, so two, zero, zero works. Plug it in, it works. Zero, three, zero works. Zero, zero, six works. Okay, so we're trying to find the area of the surface. I'm basically trying to find the area of this triangle. And you might think it's trivial, but it's not. Um, you can't really easily do one half face times height and all that stuff. <clears throat> okay, but we have a formula for it now. Okay. I'm going to use this guy, or I can show it back for you. Turn the pages correctly. this thing, or the equivalent. Square root of one plus z sub x squared plus z sub y squared. So the region in the x, y plane, say, so how do I draw it? Just ignore the zeros for the z's, zero comma three, two comma zero. In other words, this triangle way down here is the same as this one. Okay, that's the origin. I know, I'll put the corresponding points. That's the same as that. That's the same as that. Zero, three, zero is zero, three. If you ever get mixed up, just forget about the Z equals zero. And then two, zero, zero is two, zero. That matches that. So that's my picture here. If I need it, Y equals three minus three halves X. How'd I get that? Well, the slope is negative three halves. Three minus zero divided by zero minus two, right? Y two minus Y one divided by X minus X one. Negative three halves. And the Y intercept is three. Turns out I actually don't need it. I do need z sub x, negative three, z sub y, negative two. So by formula, the area of the surface is a double integral over the region R. Okay, the region R is in the x, y plane now, x, y plane of radical one plus partial z with respect to x squared plus partial z with respect to y squared. Okay, that's a two there. It's one plus four plus nine is radical 14. Okay. I'm taking a double integral of radical 14 dA. If you take outside the radical 14, you're taking a double integral dA, that's just A. So it's an area of a triangle. Not this triangle, the triangle in the XY plane, which is a right triangle. So that's just gonna be radical 14 times one half base times height. So that's two, that's three. So radical 14 times one half times two times three, three radical 14. Okay, so three radical 14 is the area of this triangle. The one that connects the three intercepts, X, Y, and Z intercepts. Okay. In the process of doing that, we needed the area of this triangle in the X, Y plane. That's the way it works. Okay, 43, <clears throat> z is equal to two thirds, x and three halves plus y and three halves, zero one cross zero one. Okay, not even, I'm not gonna try to draw that, don't have to. Okay, I need z sub x, x to the one half. z sub y, y to the one half. So by formula, it's a double integral, zero to one for x, zero to one for y, of radical one plus z sub x squared, radical x squared is just x, plus z sub y squared, radical y, y to the one half, squared is just y. So I just have this integral, okay. which seems like it should be easy, but it's not as nice as you might think. Sort of okay, but not quite. <clears throat> All right. 
So that's one plus x plus y to the one half. So when you integrate one plus x plus y to the three halves, divided by three halves means times two thirds. Bring it two thirds out. <clears throat> okay, plug in one for y. Let's see, if you plug in one for y, you have one plus one or two plus x to the three halves. And when you plug in zero for y, you have one plus x to the three halves. Right? So this is what I have. Okay, one more time, plug in one. One plus one is two. Two thirds is already outside. It's two plus x to the three halves. Plug in zero for y, one plus x to the three halves. All right, so two thirds, two plus x to the five halves divide, divided by five halves means times two fifths. One plus x to the five halves divided by five halves means times two fifths. Okay, so I have to plug in. So I'm gonna plug in one here and here, and then I'm gonna plug in zero here and here, and I do not get zero when I plug in zero. So if I plug in one, that's gonna be three to the five halves. That's gonna be two to the five. And by the way, I took out the two fifths. Two fifths times two thirds is four fifteenths. And let's see, where was I? <clears throat> if I plug in one, that's three to the five halves, that's two to the five halves. Minus, plug in zero, two to the five halves minus one to the five halves, which is one. So I have this. Okay, so I just cleaned it up as this, four fifteenths. I left the three to the five halves alone. I have minus a minus one plus one. I have negative two to the five halves and another negative two to the five halves. Believe it or not, that's negative two to the seven halves. Okay, I'll ignore the negative sign, but okay, you have negative two to the five halves, another negative two to the five halves, so maybe scratch it there. I have negative two times two to the five halves. That's just like negative x minus x is negative two x. So negative two to the five halves minus two to the five halves is negative two times two to the five halves. Two is like two to the one, and two to the one times two to the five halves is two to the seven halves. Okay, so that's what's going on there. I'm almost done, folks. It's, okay, so I think we're doing fine with time. Um, the quiz, though, yeah, I, it's not really that short. I mean, you can still do it in plenty of time. It gets a little tedious, so obviously I'm going to make enough time for you to do it. Okay, 47. Y equals X squared plus Z squared. So notice this is Y is a function of X and Z. And inside x squared plus z squared equals 16. Okay. So I think to myself, that's like x squared plus y squared equals 16. Circle, center of the origin, radius of four. So by analogy, I am just using this formula with a row reversal. Formula that I just showed you a moment ago. <clears throat> this is our favorite. Z is a function of X and Y. But they give me Y as a function of X and Z. So no big deal. <clears throat> It'll be one plus partial of Y with respect to X squared plus partial of y with respect to z squared. So whichever variable is a function of the others, you take that partial with respect to the other two. That's all. Okay, so y sub x is 2x, y sub z is 2z. So for the surface area, it's radical one plus y sub x squared, 4x squared, plus y sub z squared for z squared dA. This looks perfect for polar coordinates. So one plus four parentheses x squared plus z squared is four r squared. I know you're not used to that, but it's just a change of the letters. Polar coordinates in x and z. Otherwise, everything's the same. 
So radical one plus four r squared, dA r dr d theta. This is a circle of radius four, so r is going from zero to four, theta is going from zero to two pi. Okay, u substitution. What's the derivative of one plus four r squared? Eight r, so I need an eight inside, one eighth outside. So I'll be integrating u. So two pi, uh, yeah, the length of the interval for theta, these are all constant, doesn't involve theta. So two pi comes out, one eighth is outside. This is like u to the one half. So u to the three halves divided by three halves is times two thirds from zero to four. Okay, then I clean this up. Let's see, the top is two times two is four. The bottom is 24, four over 24 is one six, so pi over six. Plug in four, four times four times four is 64 plus one is 65 to the three halves. Plug in zero, you have one, one to the three halves is one. So pi over six, times 65 to the three halves minus one. Okay. Oh, 49 and that, that was basically done folks. 41, 49 is given parametrically. The surface with parametric equations, X is U squared, blah, 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 blah. blah. U between zero and one, V between zero and two. Okay, so to find a surface area this time, I'm gonna do this thing. Now we're gonna go over the region D of magnitude of RU cross RV DA. <clears throat> X, Y, Z. Okay, so I need R sub U, differentiate respect to U. To U, V, nothing. Differentiate with respect to V, nothing. U, V. Take the cross product. <clears throat> R, U cross R, V, I, J, K, two U, V, zero, zero, U, V. I component, that minus that, V squared minus nothing. J component is the opposite of two U, V minus nothing. K component, two U squared minus nothing. Okay. So we have this. By formula, I need its magnitude. <laughs> Remember the magnitude of vector is the square root of this thing squared plus this thing squared plus this thing squared. V to the fourth plus four U squared V squared plus four U to the fourth, which very conveniently is the square root of V squared plus U squared squared, which is just V squared plus U squared or U squared plus V squared. So that's what I'm integrating. All right, so double integral from zero to two, zero to one. V goes from zero to two, U goes from zero to one. U squared plus V squared DU DV. By Fubini's theorem, you can switch it to DV DU also. <laughs> okay, integrate with respect to U, U cubed over three plus UV squared. U goes from zero to one. Plug in zero, you get zero, forget about it. Plug in one, you have one third plus V squared. DV, one third V plus V cubed over three from zero to two. Plug in zero, you get zero, forget about it. Two thirds plus eight thirds, 10 thirds. Okay. And I am finished folks, it's not even seven. So what I think I'll do is I'll just go ahead and sneak in very little of the next section, not even take a break. I'll just go straight to the quiz. I mean, if you want a break, go ahead and take a break. But you need to have some time to do the quiz. I mean, it's it's not hard. It, it can just get tedious. Okay. So let me do my focus thing again. I forgot if it did I do the focus on this side? I'll just give it to you again. We've got time. So that. And that. All that. Mm. 
Okay. Okay, so I'm going to mark off 16.6 is done. What is 16.7 about? I'll give you an introduction to it and then go straight to the quiz unless anybody has any questions, which I don't see anything right now. Okay, so what's happening in the next section? is surface integrals, you're integrating along a surface. Okay? So let's say integrate along something like that, which we haven't done yet. Okay? Now, the only surfaces we like to do is in the xy plane, but imagine you have a surface in space now, so something like this. All right. So they give you a breakdown of how it works. You can look at this or not. Okay, look at the analysis. Okay, but what do you need to know? And what do you need to put on your cheat sheet? Page 1123. <clears throat> so number two, double integral along the surface of f of x, y, z, ds. Okay, is the integral of the region over the region d, f of r of u, v, times magnitude of r, u, cross r, v, d, a. That's very similar to what we had before. This is assuming you have z as a function of x and y. Okay, now, what's the difference between s and d? s is the surface in space. d, in the nicest example, is in the xy plane. Although, again, it could be in the yz plane or the xz plane, or it might even be in the uv plane. But it's a two-dimensional surface. Okay, this is sort of like a surface in three dimensions. Okay, so that capital S there for the first double integral, that's a surface integral. So like this, it's a curved surface. And then D is in a plane like the XY plane, okay? Okay, what else do we need? Page 1125, the special case of Z is a function of X and Y. Double integral of f of x, y, z, d, s. f of x, y, change z to the function of x and y. And then you have d, s, which we saw before. Square root of z sub x squared plus z sub y squared plus one d, a, or the equivalent. Again, the equivalent is if you have y as a function of x and z, then you know how to change it. Or if x is a function of y and z, then you know how to change it. Just, you know, it'll be partial of x with respect to y, partial of x with respect to z, and so forth. Right. All right, so be able to do integrals along stuff like this, let's say, you integrate along the surface. Okay, and when we say the surface, it does not include the inside. We've actually done surface, uh, sorry, we've actually done integrals including the inside, okay, the three dimensional cases, right? So when we get three dimensional integrals, like when x goes from zero to two, y goes from zero to one, z equals zero to three, you're integrating over a box. It's integrating along the entire box, okay? But now we're only worried about the surface. You're integrating along the surface and so not the interior, okay? And let's see. In general, we have z as a function of x and y. <clears throat> see all those normal vectors there? Page 1127. If z is a function of x and y, okay, so which one's positive, which one's negative? Well, it's positive z is up. So see, at a given point, you have all those vectors pointing up and the ones going down. Positive orientation is up, which makes sense because that's the way z is. And those negative ones are going down. We'll actually need that a little bit later. Okay, And you may need this a little bit later also. So number five, put that in your cheat sheet gives you a unit normal vector. C is a function of X and Y. Okay, for number five, see all those Gs? You might get confused with Gs. Gs are the same as Z. I don't know why they did that. It took me a while to figure that out. Z is G of X and Y. So I thought they should have just put Zs there. So for the equation, sorry, I can't point it out to you, but everywhere you see G, you might as well pretend it's a Z also. Okay. All right. Number six, you might want N, 
unit normal vector, RU cross RV divided by its magnitude. But in some sense, we did that already. Okay, we can find a normal vector by just doing a cross product. You want a unit normal vector, take is divided by its magnitude. Now, what if you have a closed surface, page 1128, for a closed surface, the positive orientation is considered out, negative orientation is considered in, and that's just by convention. So a closed surface like a sphere or a cube. Now, if you have a surface like this, positive is up, negative is down. And similarly, if you have X and Y, so if you have X as a function of Y and Z, positive is out of the book, out of the plane, and negative will be inside. If you have Y as a function of X and Z, and I think we may have some problems about that, and positive would be to the right and negative would be to the left, just by the normal definitions. Okay. But what if you have a closed surface? Then positive is out, negative is in. And there's a good reason for that. It is a convention, but since you can go infinitely far out, if you go infinitely far out, we'd rather have infinitely far out positive numbers. Okay, interior, it's limited, right? Like only six. So you'd only have to do maybe up to negative six or whatever. It wouldn't make sense to go the other way. We can go outside is negative, then you can go infinitely far out negative, but only a small number 10 inside. So positive for a closed surface, positive is out and negative is in by, con by convention. Okay, you'll want this. <clears throat> So double integral of f dot ds, flux of f across s is double integral of f dot n ds. You're actually not going to do that formula f dot n unless you have a very nice normal vector. And I'll tell you when it comes out to be a quote unquote nice normal vector. The main thing is that the unit the n doesn't change much. So we wouldn't do it here because the n keeps changing. But if the n doesn't change much or doesn't change at all, then it might be convenient to do this one. Okay. So this is called the flux of F across S. Okay. It can also be thought of as work. So flux across a surface okay. or force across a surface. <clears throat> and there's another one, a lot of formulas here. Double integral of F dot DS, F dot RU cross RV DA, which is another way of saying DS. And yeah, I should say this is D non bode S scalar as opposed to vector D bode S. As if that wasn't enough formulas, page 1130, number 10, double integral of F dot DS, double integral of negative P partial of G with respect to X minus Q, partial of G with respect to Y plus R D A. And again, think of this as Z. Let's get the book is down. I, think. I don't really know why they changed the letters. That's Z sub X minus Z sub Y plus R. Okay. What they did was they actually worked it out in the special case where Z is a function of X and Y. We took that and applied it to the special case where Z is a function of X and Y. We end up with this. Okay. And I think that's about it. Okay, I can stop. We don't have to break, or you can break if you want to. I can just go straight to the quiz if you wish. Uh, so, anybody have any questions? You check the chat, or anybody want to unmute yourselves? Otherwise, we'll go straight to the quiz and we're done for the day. Okay. And first thing I gotta do is get the quiz. I don't have the right with me, so bear with me a moment. All right, well, that would, that would have been a time for me to wait for you to ask a question and nobody did anyway. Okay, so we'll go straight to the quiz. So here we go. So screenshot or take a picture. Number one, find the curl and the divergence of bode F is x squared y cubed z to the fourth. 
two X to the fifth Y squared Z cubed, X cubed Y to the fourth Z squared. Okay. Look at the definition of curl and divergence and go right from there. Two, <clears throat> show that bold F equals four X cubed Y to the fourth Z to the fourth, four X to the fourth Y cubed Z to the fourth, four X to the fourth Y to the fourth Z cubed. Show it's a conservative vector field. So how do you do that for 3D capital F? Find its curl and show that the curl is a zero vector. Then find an anti-gradient little f such that del f is equal to bold f. Then finally find the work done in moving the particle from the origin to one, one, one. If you don't know what to do there, that's basically the fundamental term of calculus for line integrals. Okay, once you find the anti-gradient, plug in one, 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 plug in zero, 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 and subtract. Okay, it's, once you have that, it's actually very easy. Okay, so I'll give you a few more seconds to get this and then go ahead and get started. And then I'll put you in your breakout rooms and that'll be it for tonight, okay? All right, I'll assume everybody has this now, either by way of screenshot or cell phone. Okay, so let me stop the share. You can go ahead and get started. I will turn off the recording.